Hey everyone. So yesterday's video that I posted on my channel was all about the top five reasons why I think you should add a vintage watch to your collection. However, I feel like it's only fair for me to sort of explain some of the downsides of buying a vintage watch and some re potential reasons why you might want to stay away as well, uh, just for the sake of presenting a balanced perspective. Now, this might not apply to you, obviously, if you're shopping on the really high end of the vintage watch market, like let's say you're into like really good vintage Rolex, or if you're some kind of multimillionaire collecting vintage Daytonas, this is not going to apply to you. But in general, for someone shopping at sort of the lower end of the vintage market like I was, here are a few reasons why you might want to stay away or just generally a few cons. So con number one is service history. With a lot of these lower end vintage watches, it's pretty much impossible to find a decent service history. Like there's no way you're going to find a good service history dating back to the 60s for a watch like this. And in my case, I don't have any service records at all. Uh, the guy I bought the watch from said the watch is in good condition and it's telling time pretty well, but that's really it. Like you don't get any box, you don't get papers, you don't get any real proof of a service history. And that could, and that's not really a huge deal if you're just buying it, buying the watch to wear, but that's just something to keep in mind because you might have a watch that's really badly needs a service. The second con is seller reliability. So again, if you're buying a really high end vintage Rolex or something, you don't need to worry about this because you're probably buying from some kind of auction house or really reputable broker. But for a cheaper watch like this, there's all kinds of different online marketplaces. And just as with any other product, you really have to be careful and do your due diligence before you buy. So in my case, I bought this watch from a seller uh, on Reddit, on Reddit's watch exchange form. Now, I did my due diligence. I, you know, did my research as much as I could into the model. But at the same time, it's not as easy to do your research on a vintage watch like this compared to even a more popular vintage watch. Like, let's say there's so much documentation, for example, I'm sure, on vintage Rolex day dates, date just uh, Daytonas especially, but not on something like this, really. It's a little tricky to really properly research when you can't exactly find a ton of information on the reference number. Also, there are certain other things that the seller, you know, generally might not disclose. Maybe it's because they don't know it or maybe it's because they're just intentionally trying to be deceptive. Things like whether you have an original crown, an original case back, or maybe even the dial. So I know for Vintage Omega, sometimes uh, a lot of sellers will sell the watch and claim it's original, but it might be a redial. Uh, in my case, and this is kind of going off on a tangent, but the seller that I bought mine from actually ended up leaving the form after a couple months because there were some concerns about him not disclosing the authenticity of a bracelet that he had sold with another Omega. And there were other concerns brought up about how he might be flipping you know, auctions from eBay and just generally not behaving in a completely transparent manner. So thankfully I had my watch inspected and everything does seem to be perfectly authentic and exactly as the seller described. But if you're unlucky, there's always a chance you could end up with a seller who is not really forthcoming about all the details of the watch and you could end up with a broken watch or worse, maybe something that's a redial or not original or is not as described. So always be careful and do your due diligence. And the third con is sizing. Now I know I mentioned this in my previous video that this could actually be a pro depending on your circumstances. Like it's a pro for me because if I, because I have smaller wrists, but if you're one of those people with really large wrists, maybe, you know, anything close to seven inches or above, a vintage watch might not be able to fit you properly. Like sure, you can find something maybe that's, you know, closer to the 40 millimeter mark that might look good on you. But a lot of vintage watches are sized really small. Again, this one's probably 34 to 35 millimeters. So it might not fit you well. It might look super tiny on you. So that might be one reason to stay away is uh, the lack of availability of a lot of really lower end vintage watches that still have a more modern looking sizing. Reason number four is fewer complications. Now, when I bought this watch, I really loved the simplicity of it. I was especially attracted to the dial and the markers, the way that they really shine. And I don't know, I just find this watch really, really attractive. And that's why I bought it. But if you're the kind of person who really wants a watch with a lot of complications, then you're not going to get those vintage watches as readily. Now, sure, you can find, you know, a lot of vintage GMT watches, uh, vintage watches that do have some kind of a chronograph, but you, those are not going to be as available on the lower end of the market, especially with a watch like this. You can't really expect to get a lot of complications or any complications at all, really. Like, I mean, this one isn't even automatic. So if you're the kind of person who, let's say, wants uh, a date window or the date 
on your watch or some kind of other complication like GMT or chronograph, like your best bet is to probably buy a new watch because at that price range at the lower end of the market, you can spend that money and get a really nice uh, watch that's probably from a Japanese manufacturer, even an in, a watch with an in-house movement that still has a decent am- amount of complications or at least, you know, at least some complication. And this last con that I'm going to talk about, con number five, is not so much about the watch itself, but rather about the psychology of the purchase of the watch, right? So in my case, I saw this watch specifically. I love that it gave me an entry point into a Swiss brand, but I love the watch for what it is. I feel like there's some people who might be caught in the trap of maybe they have their heart set on a Rolex sub, but they can't afford it at the moment. So they figure, hey, let me just buy a vintage Rolex and at least get some kind of Rolex. And they end up probably spending maybe one to $2,000 on a not so a not so pristine Rolex Air King or something, uh, a vintage model. It's not really the best idea in my opinion. Like if you have your mind set on a specific watch, I think that you should really, the best your best bet is to just save up and until you can get that watch. Obviously within reason, of course. Uh, but at the same time, but I feel like if you do have your mindset on that other watch that's more expensive and you end up settling for a cheaper vintage watch, then it could almost be kind of a stopgap. It might not be, it might not leave you happy. It might not leave you really enjoying the watch. And in the future, if you do end up being able to save that money and get that, uh, watch that you've always dreamed of, this might completely fall to the wayside. Like you might lose complete interest in it altogether. So, just be really careful of that. Like really ask yourself what you're buying this watch for. Are you buying it simply be- only because it's an entry point into a brand that is otherwise aspirational for you? Or is it some a case of where you really like this particular watch for what it is and you really want this watch? So yeah, just really keep that in mind and try to avoid purchasing a watch like this just as a stopgap because it might not leave you satisfied. It might not give you that feeling of happiness when you wear it. But anyways, guys, uh, those are my top five cons of why you might not want to buy a vintage watch. If you again, if you have any questions uh, or comments, you know, please leave them in the comment section below. Again, a like and a sub to this channel would be really, really appreciated. It helps me out a lot. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video.